Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into a very interesting and popular algorithm that is used for finding frequent item sets. The algorithm is Park Chen Yu and it is commonly called as PCY algorithm. So, this particular algorithm is specially developed to efficiently find frequent item sets in large data sets. This algorithm is specially designed in such a manner that it is going to be very much helpful when it comes to big data. From the entire set of big data streams, this algorithm will be used to find the frequent item sets from that particular streaming data. And hence, this algorithm is widely used in big data. Finding frequent item sets means finding those items which are purchased more as well as it is also useful for finding the strong relationship between any two items when customers are purchasing it. Now why this PCY algorithm was developed? Because the algorithms that were developed earlier for example a priori or FP growth were computationally expensive because for finding the frequent items the algorithm was scanning the entire data set more than two times and therefore this is going to consume a lot of time as well as lot of computational resources and therefore PCY algorithm was developed. Now apart from this, from the huge data we are mining the frequent items. Now as you know the data set is huge, therefore the frequent item sets that we will be getting will also be in huge count. So to deal with that huge count, this a priori algorithm and earlier versions of it was not suitable and hence PCY algorithm was found to be the best for that. Now let's see what makes this PCY algorithm special. So basically PCY algorithm uses a hash based approach. The hash based approach is widely used in algorithms in big data. This approach is basically used to count the item sets that are frequently occurred as well as it also uses a technique of pruning. That means all the infrequent items, that means the items which are not purchased more will be pruned accordingly whenever the condition is not satisfied of the minimum threshold. So in the end, this entire scenario will avoid the need to generate the candidate item sets, which will make the algorithm more efficient. Now this particular algorithm is commonly used in data mining techniques as well as in association rule mining. That means to find the strong relationship between different item sets. Now the applications of this PCY algorithm includes market basket analysis, which is a trendy topic nowadays as well as in recommendation systems and web log analysis, we can use this PCY algorithm and it is proven that PCY algorithm is found to be the most efficient for carrying out this task. So I hope the PCY algorithm overview is clear to you all. Now let's have a look at the main memory representation of the PCY algorithm. So basically the PCY algorithm takes place in two passes. It consumes the main memory. In the first pass, we have these two things. The first thing is the item count. The item count means the count of the occurrence of each and every item that is present inside the basket. Now the count of the items will take a small amount of main memory. It is important to find the item count of every single item because it is going to help to prune the infrequent item set. Now the next part of the main memory in the pass one is the hash table for the pairs. That means once all the items that are satisfying the threshold condition will be taken forward and pairs will be generated from these item sets which are satisfying the condition of threshold. Once these pairs are created, the hash table for these pairs will be generated and it will be stored in the main memory. Now in the second pass, the item count boils down to the frequent items that means only those items which are satisfying the minimum threshold condition will be taken forwarded in the second pass and this frequent items is going to take lesser amount of memory when we compare it with the item count space now the next hash table for pair in the pass one will boil down to bitmap this means all the pairs that are generated based on the item counts will be mapped to a bitmap in the next pass and finally we'll be having the count of the candidate pairs that means this space will be 
for the final pairs that are going to be selected as a part of the candidate pairs and the count of those will be stored. So I hope the memory representation of the PCY algorithm is clear. And if you guys have any doubt in this concept, then you can put it in the comment section. Now let's have a look at the actual algorithm of the PCY. So as I already said that the algorithm takes place in two passes. Now let's have a look what exactly happens in the first pass. So in the first pass, we'll iterate over every single basket that is present inside the entire data stream. So for that, we'll be using a for loop. So for each basket, now inside each basket, we'll be having some set of items. So we'll iterate over all the items with again one for loop. So for each item in the basket, next we'll add one to the items count. That means we are going to count the occurrence of every single item that is present inside the basket. And once we are done with it, we'll again use one more for loop. And this time the for loop will be used for iterating over the pairs that is generated after finalizing the items that satisfies the minimum threshold condition. Now in this particular for loop, we will try to hash every single pair to a bucket. That means we will allot a separate space to every single pair with the help of the hash function and whatever output we are getting of that particular hash function, the space that is located at that particular value will be called as bucket and the pair will be stored inside that particular bucket. And we'll also store the count of every pair that is same in that particular bucket. Now this was for the pass one. Now let's move on to the pass two. In the pass two, we need to count all the pairs that is i comma j. Now this means that i is the first item and j is the second item and i comma j collectively will be called as a pair. Now the candidate pair is that pair which satisfies the minimum threshold condition. So for checking that first we will have to check whether i and j from the pair i comma j are both frequent items and next we need to check whether the pair i comma j hashes to a bucket which we have already done in the pass one. And we also have to check whether the bit in the bit vector of that particular pair is 1 or 0. If it is 1, that means the minimum threshold criteria is satisfied by that particular pair. If it is 0, that means the minimum threshold condition is not satisfied by that particular pair. And those pairs who satisfied the minimum threshold condition will be called as candidate pairs. So I hope the algorithm is clear. If it is not clear, then by looking at this particular example, it will be crystal clear. So the example says that we need to find the frequent item pairs using the PCY algorithm considering the threshold as 2. That means the minimum threshold condition here is 2. And we are also given with some set of transactions. So transactions is nothing but the items that are purchased by the customers. So in the first transaction, you can see that the items 1, 2 and 3 are purchased. In the second transactions, we have the items 4 and 5. Third transaction has the items 1, 4, 5. In the fourth transaction, we have the items 1, 2, 4 and so on. So I hope this question is clear. Now let's have a look at the solution of it step by step. So now in the step 1, you need to find the length of every single item, which means the count of the occurrence of every single item. And you need to eliminate those items whose count is less than 1. So the first step is very much simple. So here we have the set of transactions that was given in the question and we have distinct items as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you can clearly see we don't have any other items apart from these items. So you need to count the occurrence of 1. So let's check 1 is present in transaction 1, 3, 4. So the count of item 1 is 3. Similarly, you have to count the occurrence of item 2, 3, 4 and 5. So you can see the count of item 2 is 3, item 3 count is 2, item 4 count is 5 and item 5 count is 4. So we are done with counting the occurrence of every single item that is present in the transactions. Now once we are done with this, we need to eliminate those items whose count is less than 1. Now here you can see that no items which we have considered has the count less than 1. That means every single item is eligible for the next step. Hence, we'll have the final items as 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So these items will be called as 
candidate items and we have the candidate item set as 1 2 3 4 and 5 so we are done with this step 1 i hope it is clear to you all we just have found out the length and check the condition now let's move on to the step number 2 so step number 2 is little crucial here we need to form the key value pair the key will be the item pair and the value will be the occurrence of that particular item pair now pair means group of two the item sets that we have finalized in the previous step as the candidate item set we need to form pairs of those now the pairs will be generated according to the transactions so you can see these transactions we were having in the equation and now we need to create one more column which will be the pairs with their counts so you can see first item set we have as 1 2 3 in the transaction 1 so we have to form the pairs of the items in a group of 2 so the first pair will be 1 2 the second pair will be 2 3 the third pair will be 1 3 so we are just creating the combinations of length 2 and then after that the value of that each key will be the count of that particular pair so here the count of the pair 1 comma 2 is in transaction 1 and in transaction 4 hence the count is 2 similarly for pair 2 comma 3 we have the count 1 which is in the transaction 1 similarly we have to find out the key value pairs now if you focus on the transaction 2 we have just the items 4 comma 5 so there is a single pair 4 comma 5 with the occurrence 4 that means 4 times it has got repeated in the entire set of transactions now similarly we have to do it for the transaction 3 which contains the elements 1 4 5 so the pairs will be 1 4 and 1 5 now 4 5 was already there in transaction 2 hence we are not again taking that particular pair i hope this is clear similarly we have to do it for the transaction 5 and 6 you can see in transaction 5 we have the pairs 3 4 and 3 5 4 5 is already present in the previous transactions and we also have written the length of the pair 3 4 and 3 5 which is 1 and 1 respectively now the last transaction contains the elements 2 4 and 5 the pairs from this will be 2 5 only because the pair 2 4 and 4 5 is already present in the previous transactions so i hope this particular step is very much clear to you all we just have created the pairs and their count so let's move on to the third step here we need to eliminate those pairs whose count of occurrence does not satisfy the minimum threshold criteria if you remember in the question we had the minimum threshold value as 2 so the pairs whose occurrence count is less than 2 will be eliminated so if you look at the pairs column in that the first transaction contain the pair 1 comma 2 whose count is 2 so it is satisfying the minimum threshold condition hence it will be taken as the final pair next we have the pair 2 comma 3 whose count is 1 which is not satisfying the minimum threshold condition because it is less than 2 hence we will not take that particular pair in the final pair similarly we have to check for every single pair and finally we get these pairs 1 comma 2 4 comma 5 1 comma 4 and 2 comma 4 which satisfies the minimum threshold condition and hence these are the final pairs now once we calculate the final pairs the step 4 says that we need to find the bucket numbers as i already said that the bucket numbers will be found out with the help of a hash function bucket number is the address where the pair will be stored in the main memory so for that we need to apply the hash function to every single pair for calculating the bucket number so how we have to apply let's see for every single pair i comma j the hash function will be like this i multiplied by j modulo 10 modulo means we need to first divide i multiply by j by 10 and we have to get the remainder the remainder will be the answer for this particular expression and that remainder will be the hashed value of that particular bucket which is called as the bucket number so we have these finalized pairs 1 comma 2 4 comma 5 1 comma 4 and 2 comma 4 now we'll have to calculate the bucket number for each of these pairs so first pair is 1 comma 2 here the value of i is 1 and the value of j is 2 
if we put these values in the expression i multiplied by j modulo 10 we get the remainder as 2 so 2 will be the bucket number for the pair 1 comma 2 similarly we have to calculate the bucket number for the pairs 4 comma 5 which is 0 for pair 1 comma 4 the bucket number will be 4 and for pair 2 comma 4 the bucket number will be 8 so we have found out the bucket numbers for every single pair that has got finalized in the previous step now once we calculate the bucket number we are just a step ahead from the final answer now let's jump to step 5 so step 5 says that we need to create the candidate set table this is the last step and here we have to create five columns the first column will be the bit vector the bit vector is the flag whether the pair is actually a candidate pair or not next we have the bucket number column next we have the count column count column is nothing but the occurrence of every single pair next we have the pairs column and lastly we have the candidate set column which is the final storage where all the candidate item pairs will be stored first we have to fill the pairs column so we have these four pairs as the finalized pairs now we have to fill the count column which is nothing but the occurrence of every single pair which we have already calculated now we also have the bucket number so let's fill the bucket number column so the bucket number are 2048 respectively now we have to check the count the first pair count is 2 if the count is satisfying the minimum threshold condition now here in the case of pair 1 it is actually satisfying the threshold criteria that it is equal to 2 it is not lesser than 2 hence the bit vector for this particular pair will be flagged as 1 that means there is a positive response for this particular pair and if the bit vector is flagged as 1 that means the pair is ready to be a part of the candidate set which is the final frequent item pair note one thing that if the count is not satisfying the minimum threshold condition then the bit vector will be flagged as zero now in most of the cases the bit vector will not be flagged as zero because till this point only those pair will be taken forward which satisfies the minimum threshold condition because we were checking it in the previous step also but as it is a streaming data there might be a possibility that some additional infrequent pairs may come at this particular step hence we again check the condition by using the concept of bit vector now you can see that all the pairs are actually satisfying the minimum threshold condition and hence the bit vector for all the pairs will be set to 1 and hence every single pair will be forwarded to the candidate set which is nothing but the final pair set and the candidate pairs are 1 2 4 5 1 4 and 2 4 so these are the frequently occurred candidate pair in the entire data set i hope the working of the pcy algorithm and this particular example is very much crystal clear to you all if you guys get any single doubt then you can straight away put it in the comment section don't forget to put your suggestions and reviews also for more such videos do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on instagram thanks a lot for watching and have a good day ahead